Hi beer lovers, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel and indeed welcome to an empty shell in Hackney Wick. Yeah, why have you brought me here Johnny? You're not going to murder me are you? Uh, depends how this goes. Is there an acid bath in the back? What's not, going on? No, not that I know of. Uh, we are down at the Hackney Wick Warehouse which is in East London because uh, Cave Director Beer Merchants, which is my, my job, yeah. we are founding our own taproom, bottle shop and blendery right here in this gigantic room. Get out of town. Which is very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, and when I say a blendery, that's the stuff that's really making my heart go. We are starting a spontaneous beer blendery uh, inspired by the lovely Lambix, uh, which you may see around this very dusty table in front of you. Um, so we're going to be getting spontaneous beer from British breweries uh, and blending it in a barrel room out back. Uh, to produce our own Lambic inspired beers. So we thought a great way to promote that would be to try some of the incredible beers that have inspired it to do so. So a bit of a hard sell for a second. We're currently crowdfunding for this amazing space. And there's a link below in the description if you want to invest in it. For every pound you invest, you get a two pound bar tab when we open the pub around January, February next year. What? That's going to sell like hotcakes, okay, surely? I, I would imagine so. Free beer, it's essentially so. buy one, get one free. Yeah, basically. Money. Um, beautiful lambics and uh, about seven, eight hundred other beers will be available at any one time. So very exciting. But let's get stuck into the stuff yeah. that's yeah. right now, uh, which is four of the best gerses in the world. Gerses. Johnny. Tell me about Gerzes. Right. I know more. So a Gerz is a form of spontaneous slash lambic beer. Yes. Um, Gerzes have quite strict rules as to what you can call one. Um, so all of these are Erd Gerzes. Erd Gerzes. You're going to get bored saying Gerz and Gerzes. Um, so this means that they are legitimate uh -huh. lambics. They haven't been sweetened and they've followed all the traditions that you need to follow to call it an Erd Gerz. Right. Uh, one of which is that it has to be bottle conditioned. Okay. So technically you can't really get a Gerz on draft. Oh. It can only be in a bottle. That's uh, okay. We like bottles too. Yeah. So should we should we get stuck in and describe the beers as we go? Dude, it's about eleven in the morning, but let's let's go for it. I'm <laughs> okay. this. Um, so Lindemans are more famous for their slightly sweeter fruit beers. Yeah. Um, yeah. But their oud stuff, which is, come, comes under the brand of Cuvée René, um, like a champagne, like a champagne, beautiful, uh, mm -hmm. is beautiful stuff. Cuvée René, uh, René was. Uh, uh, the owner of the blender for a while and part of the family of Lindemans. He's also in Hello Hello. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's the same guy. Oh. Ooh, I just got a real, real big waffle. Real waffle. Mm. Um, so Gers is usually a blend of one, two and three year old Lambics. Okay. Um, if you want to learn more about Lambics and Gers and blending, uh, there'll be a video at the end of this video to explain it all. Great Looks color. a bit like a lager, doesn't it? It does. Lovely, very, very good. Amber, yeah. Mm. It smells like a really dry, cidery champagne. Yeah. I think, I mean, Lindemans gets, gets the odd bit of hate for the sweetened beers, but this stuff, I think it's one of the best Gerzes in the world. And that's why I've put it in here, because that smell is just gorgeous. It is a lovely smell. I'm loving the mouthfeel. It's really champagne, like really fine bubbles, isn't really it? Really smack in the back of my yeah. chops as well. Which, um, I mean, the mouthfeel, everything changes in the bottle, because it's bottle fermented and because you can age this stuff for... Well, it might, some of the bottles will out, outlive you, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so it can change me. It's going up, going on. <laughs> Preserved from the alcohol, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of like a champagne meets cider meets. Yeah. It feels quite marrow. sophisticated to me. It does feel like uh, champagne y. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you it's could have this in a flute. I wouldn't advise it, but you could, and you'd feel very fancy. And you might trick the old person to know that. Just a little about pinky finger out as well. Hmm. So now we're going deep sea diving for some whales next. Hunting for whales. Yeah. So, Tilcam. Ooh. Tilcan are not technically a brewery, no. they are a blendery, so they buy, uh, buy their wort, which is the sugary sticky stuff you make beer out of, they buy it from other Lambic breweries. Right. Um, so they're kind of like Del Boys operating out the back of the van. I, I, I wouldn't describe Pierre Tilcan as a Del Boy. So what Pierre says you get from this, because he's a blendery and he's coming from four different, uh, it's coming from four different breweries, he tries to make his very balanced, very, very drinkable and take a little bit of all the funkiness from all four breweries. So for me, this is much, much more mellow. Yeah, it's more delicate, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's less champagne -y and a little bit more, a little bit more beery, which <laughs> I know is a ridiculous thing to say about a beer. Yeah, it's not doing the, the, so much of the, the tangy back of no. the mouth, smacky jobby. I feel like it's got a bit more, a bit more umami to it, a little bit more maltiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, maybe even hoppiness. I think there's a bit of malt on the nose. Yep. For sure. And, and um, almost a little bit of sort of light struck. Uh, yeah. mustiness as well. I yeah. mean, it's in a green bottle so that could happen. It's not a lot of hops in the lambic to make that happen, but you mm. do get a little edge. You know that's a beer, whereas this one you could trick people. Exactly. Yeah. 
So now we're going to go to one of the breweries that provides work to Tilcan, so we can see right. if, we, if there's anything we taste in common. That's quite, yeah. yeah. Okay, this, um, is, this is interesting, isn't it? It's like a kind of, um, it's very much a mixed bag. It's like, almost like a kind of mongrel dog, as it were. They're kind of, they're, they're <laughs> not to put mongrel dogs down, because they're very beautiful, lovely animals. Or to put lambics down. Or lambics, more importantly. <laughs> but there's something amazing when you cross fusion things together, yep. that the magic you can get happens that doesn't come from a single place, but when you put them together, fireworks. Greater than some of its parts. That's the one. That, that's the one, not that's mongrel the one. beer. I like mongrel beer. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. Um, so this is Boom Mariage Parfait. So they have a, a lovely straight girls, and then they do the Mariage Parfait, which is French for the perfect marriage. Okay. So that involves uh, Frank Boone, the owner of, of Boone's favorite three-year-old battles. And it's called Mario's Parfait because he then blends them together into the perfect marriage. Sounds like an album. <laughs> Frank Boone and the Booners. <laughs> Frank Mariage Boone and the Mario's Parfait. Parfait. <laughs> it's yeah. a great name. Is it a great beer? Mm. So you can, you can get that there's old lambic in there. There's no sweetness. There's a little bit of fun going on. Yeah, it's all funk, no sweetness. Mm. None, no hoppy sort of mustiness either, and none of that sherbetty sweetness. It's yeah. all just dry funk. That is incredibly dry. Yeah. Kind of like biting into orange pith. Like mm. None of the fruity juiciness, it's just dry, dry, dry peel. So you can really taste it, that's a wild beer. Probably more than the other two. Mm. Um, but at 8%, it does not drink like an 8% beer either. No way. There's absolutely no hint that it's that strong. Yeah, no. So final beer. How's the heartburn doing? It's, it's doing. It's doing. It's doing. It's doing. It's doing. I'm feeling it's doing great. great. Now, Drew Fontainen used to be in a pokey little place near Beer Cell, uh -huh. uh, and they've recently got themselves the most incredible uh, sort of, well, it's a warehouse, but it's got loads of land around it, which are gonna grow cherries uh, and different fruits. It's a big old place, and it's absolutely beautiful, uh, with a lovely tap room, so if you can go, please do. And the, the new branding is just it's stunning, I love it's it. It's trendy. It's trendy, isn't pretty it? Pretty trendy. For, for uh, from these guys. For, for a Belgian, that's what you're trying to say. Are you from land? Pujotten land. Pujotten land. So close, yeah. Not yeah, I mean, all of these guys have to be in the Pajotland. Yeah, the only yeah. exception is Tilcan, who's like 100 metres outside it, but they let him in. Oh, what? I Which... don't think so, Tilcan. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. 100 metres outside it? Yeah, basically. So he had to, had to get special... He had to run 100 metre dash permission. in under 10 seconds. To, <laughs> if uh, he could do it in under 10 seconds, he was allowed in, yeah. <laughs> right. So this one has a little bit of haze, which might be because it got shook up in a bag on the way. Mmm. But the others were crystal clear, so... That's definitely got some of that uh, light-struck funk to it. Yeah, funky. Bit fruity as well, isn't it? That comes out of nowhere, that one. It starts light and slightly malty and, and a little bit dusty from that, that yeah. up light striking and then ooh, it sort of... Builds and builds. Explodes like a spray and hits all your synapses. So yeah, loads it's of really... Empty apple. Back of my mouth, that's it, yeah. isn't it? It's a little bit cidery sherbet. Yeah. You don't expect a, a beer that, that sort of smells like that to hit soft and then explode. You think it's going to be acidity from the start. Whereas that's really smooth at the start and then grows and grows and grows. I love the mouthfeel of that one as well. Yeah. Those delicate little bubbles. Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Very much like this one. Very champagne y kind mm. of feel to it. That's lovely. I don't know, that might be my favourite. All the Lindemans. It's, be it's between me. those two, I think. For, for sure, I think, I mean, this is quite a young bottle, so that if you're drinking the new brand of Drefontainen, then it's quite young with a girls, maybe leave it for 18 months. Mm -hmm. So after all that, I think my favorite has been the Lindemans, but I've learned a huge amount about how much one style of beer can vary just through, you know, when you're deciding a barrel is ready mm -hmm. and is it that blame? Because if the recipe stays the same, then I think they're just waiting for each barrel to be exactly where it needs to be. Um, and the huge skill is you're kind of telling the future because you make that blend hoping that in you know, six months, a year, 18 months, it's gonna have certain taste profiles. So this has been huge inspiration for when we create our own blends and we're gonna be learning from the masters that make it mm. uh, before we produce our beers. And if you wanna come taste those, you'll have to come here, but first you have to crowdfund. So again, if you, if you live nearby or if you're ever gonna visit London, please, please click on the link below and donate a little bit of money and I'll get you double your money in the pub. Cheers, Brad, you finished your glass, but cheers for you. Cheers anyway.